Right, welcome back to the channel and uh, I'm being a bit quiet because we're inside Haynes Car Museum, it's a bit quiet in here, but we are in the Red Room. If you haven't checked it out, we came down early for the Haynes breakfast meet. So if you haven't checked that, pause this, check out the video before, uh, and now we're in the museum itself. But yeah, this is the Red Room. Look out there, so let's go check it all out. So let's kick off this red room. This is such a pretty looking car. This is the Alpha Julia Sprint GT. So when this came out in 1967, this was just over 1700 pound new. Sorry, but such a pretty looking car. And then you've got the uh, Maserati Marac SS. Another really nice looking car from back in the uh, 80s. It's pretty, it's come out just before I was born. I was born in 83. So I think these come out in 82. Uh, but uh, yeah, really, really nice. Again, just I've just looked on the plaque. So when this came out in 1982, it was 12,000 pounds. That was a lot of money back in the day. Morgan Supersport, little three-wheeler. They're really cool. Right, there are so many cool cars in this room. I don't know where to point a camera. Right, this has to be one of my favorites from in here. So this is uh, a 1965 356 C, so a coupe. So this was the first ever Porsche to actually wear the Porsche uh, brand, the Porsche name. So this was Porsche's first ever car. So it looks really cool in red, doesn't it? Such a pretty car, but the side profile, such a nice car. In 1966, this was a Jaguar D-Type, which they turned into the XKSS, which won Le Mans. And then once they were done with racing, they, can, they made a road-going version of it. They took the old race cars, and when they were done with them, they converted them to, to road-going cars. But this is a replica. That looks so cool in red though. And then you've got this lovely E-type Jag. I mean, red definitely suits cars, sports cars of this era. And then you've got this AC, I was gonna say AC Cobra, but this is an AC Ace. So they took the AC Ace and then uh, Carol, Sh Carol Shelby took a big V8, plonked it in there and then turned the AC Ace into the iconic AC Cobra. But this was the AC Cobra before the AC Cobra. Right, so this is the Lamborghini Countach. So this is the LP400S. This is a poster car for the whole generation. So this came out in 1981 uh, with its 4-litre V12, driving the rear wheels through a five-speed manual gearbox. I think at a top speed of about 160 miles an hour, 0 to 60 in just under six seconds. Uh, this thing, when it came out, every kid had a poster of this on its wall. Such an iconic look, isn't it? The door going up. Everyone had a poster of these on their wall, didn't they? Yeah. I didn't. No. Well, I definitely had a poster of one of these. So you've got the little American corner over here in the red room. You've got this nice 66 Ford Mustang. It looks really nice in red. And then the C5 Corvette, again, iconic in red. All sports cars of this era, I think, had to be red. And then the uh, Dodge Viper. This is the RT10. Looks really nice. Proper iconic poster car as well. And then you've got the 73 Pontiac Firebird Trans Am. Little uh, American lineup over in the red room. But uh, yeah, this room is super cool. Look. Literally a bit of everything in here. I've been to the Haynes Car Museum quite a few times, but I always forget how crazy this place is. Look. If you haven't visited here, we drove two and a half, three hours for this this morning. It was definitely worth it. This place is crazy. I have to say, I really like the color on this. This is a 1973 911 Carrera RS. So this is a 2.7 liter Touring. So a slightly softer version of the racing car, but what an iconic look. I love the ducktail. Really, really like that bright yellow. Right, there's a lot of older cars here, look. All like 40s, 50s, 60s. We're gonna skip past these. But if you ever come down, you can always check them out if this is your cup of tea. But we're gonna skip past these. Right, 
I knew I said I was going to bypass all the old stuff, but this caught my eye. So this is a 1932 MG K1 converted to a K3. Imagine owning this in 1932. The iconic GT40. Who knows why it's called the GT40? I mean, a little fact, but it's 40 inches tall, but I'm sure a lot of you know that, but yeah, the iconic GT40. This is actually a DAX replica, but as replicas go, that looks so cool. Really nice Ferrari 360 Challenge to Dali. This actually competed and won in uh, the GT Cup. We're in Ferrari Enzo's kind of room. This is a 2360 Spider, lovely color, really like that. Then you've got a really nice 1960s 250 GT. Really nice colour on the 456 GTA, really underappreciated Ferrari I think. And then this is a 400i. This was Ferrari's first go at taking away just a 2 plus 2 and doing a proper four-seater. But uh, yeah, a lot of people thought that wasn't a real Ferrari. And then you've got the 308 GTS. This is a Magnum PI's iconic car from the TV show. But uh, yeah, really nice Ferraris in here. Right, so the 1969. Dodge Charger had to be the ultimate baddie car. This was the chase car in um, Bullet, and then obviously the General Lee in the Dukes of Hazard. but yeah, it's always been the baddie car, hasn't it? Such a menacing looking car. So cool, really nice car, I like it in the blue as well. Right, so this is a 1958 Ford Fairlane, but look how technology's come along. You've got this massive metal folding retractable roof, and it fills this huge void in the back of the car. But um, yeah, that's massive. Can you imagine what the technology would do now? It'd make it like origami. That's massive. Right, so this must be the American kind of hall. There's so many cars in here. Uh, got such an impressive collection of these behind me, like Old Mobile, Packards, Fords, Pontiacs. Loads and loads of cool stuff, all from 30s, 40s, 50s. Immaculate, immaculate condition. Let's just do like a little B-roll of stuff because there's so much to show you. So this is what I was saying in the other room, they took the uh, AC Ace and after Carol Shelby put the massive V8 in it, they tur he turned it into this, the iconic AC Cobra. So it's cool to see the difference between the two. So if you like your Corvettes, you've got the 69 Stingray there and then this is the 1960s Chevy Corvette. That has to be my favourite. And then this is the 63 Stingray. What would you take? I think the 1960s for me, that is such an iconic car. That looks really nice in the white with the red and then the red interior as well. Really, really nice that is. No introduction needed. The DeLorean that was used in the Back to the Future film. Right, so we're in the Williams F1 area and loads in here. Let's have a walk around. This is the Williams FW38. So this is from 2016. Did 21 races and this is, uh, who race it? This would be Bottas and Felipe Massa's car. And then here you've got the FW30. Look at the difference. So this was the 2008 car. So this would have been Nico Rosberg's car. But yeah, the difference is crazy. So talking about differences, look at the difference here. This was a 1995 car, so this would have been the FW17. Uh, this is Damon Hill and David Coulthard's car. But you can see the difference in the aero. So this would have been an even earlier car. This would have been a 1991 FW14. Uh, so this would have been the iconic, the best sounding series in my opinion. This would have been the three and a half litre V10. Uh, so this would have been uh, Nigel Mansell's car, wouldn't it? This would have been Nigel Mansell's. But uh, yeah, the sound of these will never come but these sounded the best but uh, yeah this is my favorite so this would have been Ralph Schumacher's 2001 FW23 but you can see the difference in there look 2001 and then you got 1991 the difference in the car is crazy the aero but if you could go back you'd go back to the three and a half litre V10 wouldn't you right so this would have been Valtteri Bottas's FW38 from 2016 so yeah, the aero on these is crazy. To think these only had a 1.6 litre V6 turbo. They definitely don't sound the same, but the difference in uh, the years of F1 has just come on such a long way. All the aero on the front and the back and everything is crazy looking things. So 
they seem to put all the lotuses over in the corner. You've got a lovely Elite over in the corner there, and then next to this tiny little Alain. But they're really cool to drive, nice little car. Then we pan back out and you've got this black Turbo Esprit. That looks really nice with the black and the gold accents. And then you've got the really nice Elise. And then next to there, tucked in the corner, you've got an Europa. That looks really cool. And then back over here, you've got like a race spec Elite. Lovely livery on that, looks really cool. Right, so I was actually at the British Motor Museum when the uh, Jaguar Heritage Centre literally last weekend and we saw the prototype of this and a lot of disappointed people when they placed the order for this because when they um, done the prototype it had the scissor doors and it come with a V12 engine and four wheel drive but then when it actually got released in 1993 they reduced it to a three and a half litre V6 producing only 542 brake horsepower uh, it still did 213 miles an hour and 0 to 60 in 3.6 seconds but still cost a whopping £470,000 in 1993 but yeah a lot of people pulled out of their orders when they found out all the changes. Right, this is pretty cool to see. This is the original Mini and you can see the design, the way they, I think the Mini was one of the first cars to ever transverse the engine, so it went that way. And they pretty much just crammed it in there, no space at all left. And then you had a steering wheel, three pedals, seat for the front seats, back seats, and then just enough room for two suitcases. I mean, uh, it was a design kind of master cast, wasn't it? It was such a such a ahead of its time when it came out. But uh, yeah, cool to see that all cut out. But for me, the 1965 Mini Cooper has got to be my favourite Mini. Looks so cool in red as well with the white roof. So the Dieter Pantera was such a pretty car for me. I think it always looked really nice, especially in yellow. That looks awesome. Right, got a couple of really nice Mercedes. Got this 190 SL and then the 280 SL. Both really immaculate condition, but what one would you take? On a summer's day, I think the 190 looks so nice, especially in white. So I had to come back and check this out. This is in the entrance to the museum, but it was absolutely swarmed with people when we come in. So this is the 1986 RS200 Group B rally car, but this is one of the homologated versions, obviously the road going version. Uh, so they made, I think it was 200 that they had to make uh, road going versions to take it rallying. But imagine driving that on the road. This is super cool and interesting, the Honda Civic Type R, this is in the entrance as well, but they've cut all the panels away so you can see all the inner workings. You don't really realise what goes in to one of these cars. Look, even inside the seat, all the bits that make just a seat up and all the crash zones and everything. And then check out the cutaway of one of the aluminium tyres. All the panels and that's super cool. That is clever how they've done that. Thank you, cheers. Right, that is it, we are done. Here at Haynes Car Museum, I had to be a big kid and go in the shop and buy myself some Hot Wheels cars. Apparently, boys never grow up, but we're all done. Uh, it's a really, really cool museum. They literally have a bit of everything. So even if you're a little way away, it's definitely worth a trip to visit this place. We didn't have too long because we come for the breakfast meet this morning. So if you didn't check that video out, go back and check the one before this. Uh, but uh, yeah, it was a really good visit. Me and my little petrol head. Uh, we had a great time. Hope you liked the video. Hope it's uh, kind of, if you thought about visiting this place, hope it gives you a bit of an insight. And uh, hope you liked the video. Check you on the next one. Music.